Walter said, the story of Jonah is not a true story. It is just a story. It is not his story. It is just a story. And here's why. First reason, whales cannot swallow a human, which is true. They have small throats. Even a whale shark has a small throat, but a sperm whale actually can swallow a human. A sperm whale is different than all other whales. It is impossible to survive in the belly of a whale for three days because of the acid and the lack of oxygen. And Jonah's story is impossible based on the timeline of where he launched in Joppa and where he was swallowed. The timeline doesn't work out. So yes, it is impossible for a person to live within a fish for three days. But it's also impossible for someone to walk on water. It's also impossible for matter to be created out of a word. It's also impossible for a man to be thrown into a den of starving lions and not be touched. It's also impossible a guy to be thrown into a furnace that's blazing fire that burned the guards that threw him in and not even be singed, not even his clothing. It's also impossible for someone to rise from the dead. Those are all impossible things. Hmm. But strange they all happened. So what do I believe about Jonah? I believe that God can do whatever he wants. Oh, you lying ass liar. Oh my, oh my goodness. So basically this man just used faith with no facts, which is what faith is, to try to say that Jonah's story is real, which is one of the most implausible stories that's in the Bible. He admits that the only whale that could, that could swallow a human would be a sperm whale. Now, sperm whales have never been in the Mediterranean until the classical period. The classical period is around the 17th and 18th century. Prior to that, there has never, ever, 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 ever in recorded history been sperm whales in the Mediterranean to the Levant Basin. So for him to throw the sperm whale in there, since we know that they are there now, is him trying to validate his story. So what's Jonah swallowed by a sperm whale? He don't know, he's just making up stuff. And he's just using something that we know now to try to justify something in the past. So we know Jonah could not have existed, was not swallowed by any whale whatsoever and could not have existed inside of a belly of a whale. Now he knows that that is an impossibility. So what he tries to do at that point is to say that because God can do whatever he wants to do, he can make all the impossible possible and then throws in all the impossible things that people believe in based on that Bible, which is based on pure faith to suggest that the story of Jonah must be and can be true since this guy has done the impossible. But there's actually zero evidence of any of those things ever happening. As a matter of fact, when you look at the Jonah story, it says that Jonah then went to Nineveh. And the people of Nineveh then began to worship Yahweh. But when we look at the historical evidence in dealing with Nineveh, and we found thousands of tablets, tens of thousands of tablets in Nineveh, and not one tablet, not one, speaks of the king of Nineveh and its people converting over to the worship of Yahweh. If that had happened, the king would have issued an order. The king would have put it out in tablets. It would have been written on the wall and they would have been worshiping Yahweh. But what do we see throughout the entire history of Nineveh? What we see is that they used to worship Marduk and then they started worshiping, um, they started worshiping the goddess Sin, the, which is the moon god. And they also worship El, but not the L of your Bible that you call Yahweh now, but the L who's had a wife named Asherah and they worship El and Asherah. They also spent a little bit of time of worshiping Elnana, but at no time did they ever worship Yahweh. And certainly not during the time frame that Jonah supposedly was swallowed by the well and was sent to Nineveh to preach to the people of their doom. And then the people convert over. So we know the story based on history is false. There's no historical documentation of uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego being thrown into a fire and Nebuchadnezzar saying that, oh, and the son of man was in the fire with them and converted over to Christianity or even or converted over to Judaism at that time frame. There's no story of that. And Nebuchadnezzar would have had that written down if something of that magnitude had happened. There's no, nothing in Babylon that says that 
that story happened. There's nothing in Babylon that says that Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. Matter of fact, there's nothing written by the Babylonians or even the Persians that even mentions Daniel. These were all stories that people just made up. None of these stories actually happened. The only way that these stories happen is in the imagination of people who just decide that they're going to believe in this in the face of facts that none of these things ever happen. Was there men in the early first century who called, whose name was Yashu, who claimed to be a Messiah that the governors of Judea, Pilate being one, killed for calling themselves the Jewish Messiah? Yes. Did any of them walk on water? No. Did any of them feed 6,000 people with a two-piece fish sandwich? No. Did any of them raise the dead? No. Pilate had the overwhelming majority of them killed. Not just one, but multiples, year after year after year, killed for claiming to be the Jewish Messiah. It was to such a degree that the emperor, Augustine, called Pilate back to Rome because he was committing war crimes, crimes against Roman levels of humanity. Yet when he was on his way, Augustus, and I say Augustine, but Augustus died and he never had to stand before the emperor and Vespasian. Well, first there was four emperors and then Vespasian finally took over. So Pilate killed a bunch of people who claimed to be the Messiah. And many of them ran into the wilderness and had followers, but they just never gained the attention of the Vespasians, of the Flavians rather. And they never became the political powerhouse in Rome, a politicized religion. But these stories are completely false. These stories are just made up fairy tales in order to give a people who are being oppressed some level of hope. Because when you look at the history of the Levant, those people suffered under the rulership of the Egyptians, of the Syrians, of the Babylonians, of the Persians, of the Greeks and then the Romans. So in their oppression, they created hero stories. All of them are John Henry. Might have been somebody who lived, but John Henry never took a pickaxe and dug a hole in a mountain in one day to beat a steam engine. Daniel, Joe, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Jonah, Jesus could be based off some individual person, but that person never did the things that they claimed. They were legendized. They were created into legends so that people will have senses of hope, believing that their God is for them. It is the same way that people enslaved in the Americas prayed to a God for freedom and not a damn thing happened until man decided that man was going to intervene. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.